Hello everyone, I'm Deborah Williams with Women Empowering Women Foundation of Dallas. And we are here at the Neiman Marcus Cafe and what we're doing is empowering women and we're talking about the awareness of domestic violence. We need for you to support the Me Too movement, domestic violence, because it's rampant here in the Dallas area right now. So we're here to celebrate, to celebrate life, to celebrate this event. We have a book signing by Ms. Davis, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the awareness of it and the cause of it, and then we're going to embrace each other. So come by, see us. My website information is wewfoundation.org. That's wewfoundation.org. Have a great day. We want to go ahead and say grace. We're going to let Dr. Marcia, 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 Marcia there, Thedford, Thedford mm -hmm. um, start us out in prayer. So everybody bow your heads. Good afternoon, everyone. This is truly the day that the Lord hath made, yes. and we shall rejoice and be glad in this day. Oh, Heavenly Father, oh, gracious Father, we come first of all thanking you for being God, because yes, truly yes. there is no God likened unto you. We thank you, Lord, that you have deposited yourself on the inside of each one of us, Father. Yes. We thank you because of you we live, we move, and have our being. Father, bless this occasion and this event, Father. Yes. Pour your anointing all through this room that people will know that you are God, Father. Thank Father, you. we thank you in advance for what you're going to do for each person in this place, Father. Yes. We yes. thank you, Lord, and we bless your name and we praise you, Father. We thank you for the hearers of the word and the ones that are on their way, Father. We thank you for the food that has been prepared for us today. Not just your, our physical food but our spiritual food that will be deposited so they can grow and be empowered within. Yes, Father, we just yes. thank you and we just praise you in Jesus' name. In Jesus Amen. Name. Amen. 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 Okay. You can continue um, ordering your, your salad. And we're just going to go ahead with the flow of the event. So I decided to let's not put anything on an agenda. Let's do like an improv too. Uh, we can talk about uh, Miss Davis's book. We can talk about uh, things that are happening today. Domestic violence is rampant. They just made an announcement uh, two days ago on Channel A WFA that it is rampant in the Dallas Fort Worth area. I didn't get the statistics on it but it's very high. This is this this state, this city is is I mean is ramping with domestic violence and and suicide and murder. So we need to empower and embrace this event, what we're doing here, uh, our call to God, our assignment and we're here for the assignment of what we need to do to help empower not only the women, but also we need to embrace these men, the, the millennials, um, whomever is in that state of mind for uh, bruised but not broken issues. And that's what Ms. Davis is going to talk about, bruised but not broken. So. Give yourself a hand for being here. Everybody came in running a little late, so it's okay, but we're here. God got us here in time. Yes, yes. So let's eat, be merry, and let's enjoy the event. Yes. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Um, one of the things I want to say is Miss Deborah, I met her about a month ago, found out that we were cousins, and it's just a wonderful blessing to uh, meet your family after so many years. Um, and we instantly had a bond when, when I met her and she told me about her foundation and I said, you know, whatever I can do to help with your foundation, anything that I can do, I'm, I'm a new author, um, just recently published in September and with that, 
you know, God gave me a ministry for women, a heart for women. And I said, whatever God will have me to do, I will do it. And not long, I was one week away from my book signing event when I met her. And God would say, this is your next assignment. And I'm like, well, I haven't even had my book, my book <laughs> signing yet. The book not even <laughs> off the presses yet. And God showed me. He said, I'm about to propel you to a different place in your life. And he said, so when assignments come, I want you to be ready. And so when this assignment came, I said, okay, Lord, I'm there. Whatever you have me to do. Uh, when I first started writing this book, it started out as just a memoir of, you know, a broken daughter. Um, and I say broken, but I was really just bruised. Um, bruised in a way that when my father and my mother got a divorce, my dad divorced my brother and, and, and I. And um, I was just telling a young lady earlier about we would go to holidays at my grandparents' house and we would see my dad. And he would just ignore that we were even there. Mm. Wouldn't even acknowledge us. Mm. Or he would get his family, pack up, and leave. Because being in the room with us, for whatever reason, gave him this certain feeling. And God showed me through that I dealt with rejection for a long time in my life. Rejection from friends, rejection from family members. I dealt with that for so long, I would always second guess myself. God gave me a big voice, but it was stifled for so many years because I felt like nobody wants to hear what I have to say. I'm not worthy of the type of love that God says that I should be worthy of. I didn't believe that. And so sitting down, writing this out actually was a huge release for me. It was a huge, you know, sigh of, you know what? No matter, despite, we don't pick our family. We do not pick our family. But the people that are in our lives are there for a reason. And some are there for a season. Mm -hmm. And even if it's your parents, if they're there for a season, there's a testimony in that. Uh, in the book, I talk about um, almost losing my husband twice, actually. The first time, he was a millimeter from being paralyzed from the neck down, mm -hmm. a millimeter. If you could think about how small a millimeter is. Then, almost losing my oldest son to, um, to police violence, to police, almost killing my son. I was able to see the tape. I was able to see how my son, the fear in his eyes when he was running from his police officer that was hunting him down like an animal. My youngest son, when he drowned, and he died. But guess what? God was there. The ambulance was already there for some, something else, a little minor accident. They were able to bring my son back. And so when I tell you, if you continue to believe and trust in God's will, his power, I'm telling he will bring you to the other side. So all of these things that I dealt with and the things that I went through, and God still bringing me through that and being able to trust him and believe him, he's my father. Yes. He's my father. Mm -hmm. He sent people along the way that touched my life. He sent me a wonderful husband. When I met this man, people told me he, he don't want you because you got two kids and you got two different daddies for those kids. No, no man wants a woman like that. Well, here we are 18 years later. 18 years later. No man can change what God puts together. No Amen. man. Amen. Yes, sir. So I say to you today, I want to encourage you. I know my cousin is dealing with a situation that happened to her this week. But I want you to know that God has you. God has you. He has your family. And I want you to know that you just keep on holding on to him and keep trusting him. Because he's going to heal that pain. I know it's new and it's, it's you know, ever present right now. But God is going to, he's going to heal that pain. It's something we, we're never prepared for. But you just keep trusting him. And then I want to say thank you to Dr. Marcia for coming. She is my prayer warrior, my spiritual mother. I met her uh, two years ago. And um, she is um, such a wonderful spirit. When I met her, I still had that whole issue of, am I going to be rejected? 
So I kind of pulled back a little bit the first time I met her, but then her spirit kept pulling my spirit. She was like, baby, come on. And so now this is my spiritual mother. And um, one of the things is she also published a book, Just Pray About It. And so when I read her book, that propelled me to finish my book because I was stuck. And I just want to thank uh, both of these ladies for being here and getting behind me and having me partner with them. And I just thank you, Deborah, because we, we met for one day. And we already, the Lord already put us together. So I just praise you and I thank you uh, for even thinking about this event, you know, for domestic violence. And so I just, you know, the people that have gone through it, I just say a special prayer for them because I know it's not easy. Um, I'm going to read a little excerpt from my book regarding domestic violence. And just to kind of tell you where I was coming coming from with this. My brother and I used to spend our summers with my Uncle Jerry and Aunt Kim. One summer, I did what typical teenagers do. I tested the rules set by my family. In fact, I disobeyed my uncle and used his expensive video equipment without permission. My uncle lived out of town in Houston, and when I arrived home one, week, one weekend before school started, he called my mother to tell her about the incident. My mother proceeded to reprimand me for using my uncle's equipment, and she was fussing at me, and I tried to explain. As I started to explain, my stepfather became enraged. I was in the middle of two rather upset parents. However, my stepfather's anger was frightening. Far beyond an upset or disappointed parent, I started to walk towards my room, assuming I would escape the volatile situation and we would all cool off in a few minutes. As I walked toward my room, my stepfather caught up to me and swiftly punched me in the center of my face. Mm -hmm. His punch knocked me out unconscious, and I woke up to a bloody, swollen face with bloodshot eyes. My mother was terrified, crouching to protect me from further hits, while my brother tried to fend my stepfather off with a baseball bat. I regained consciousness and escaped to my room and locked the door. My stepfather left the house and I could hear my mother and brother sobbing. My face looked like I had been in a head-on collision and that is exactly what I told my friends and counselors at school on the first day. On the first day of school I wore sunglasses to cover my bruise. By the time lunch rolled around I was called to the counselor's office and questioned by a detective. I hit my head on the windshield during a car accident, I explained, assuming they bought the story, but I could not have been more wrong. Ultimately, my lie was detected and the truth behind our family situation unfolded. Ultimately, our family was mandated to attend regular counseling sessions and anger management classes. Although those bruises may have faded, the memory is ever sharp in my memory and I still wear a bruise in one of my eyes where Every once in a while, I can see where I have come from and what I've been delivered from. So I say that to say that not only does domestic violence affect the person that's going through it, every weekend he would, he would be abusive to my mother, it starts to affect the children that are involved, the other family members that are involved. And so I say that to say, um, you know, I'm, I'm so happy for women, empowering women, because she's helped so many women come out of situations like this. And I'm going to tell you, it's scary, because you don't know where to go and what to do when you're in that situation. It's not only physical, it's mental. And so people always say, oh, well, she could just leave. Why don't she just get her stuff? But if you've worked your whole life to build a home, and, 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 you know, all your money is tied up with this person. It's not that simple. It's not always that simple for that person when they're going through. When you're mentally beat down, there's, there's always not just an escape. Oh, just walk out the door and leave. So I just thank you all today for being here and in support of this. Because, like she said, there are so many people that suffer from this just in the Dallas-Fort Worth area um, that we don't hear about. But we want to be able to reach them and help them. So, all righty, thank you all. <laughs>
let me just say this. Um, we put smiles on our face on a daily basis, but you never know what's going on with them on the inside. People are suffering every single day with domestic violence, with mental illness. It is rampant. Rampant in, in, in our African American community. And, and we just got to be able to tackle it and embrace it. We have to. So we have to be encouragers for others. A friend of mine told me, he said, Deborah, you're an encourager because you, you speak encouragement. And just before that, another friend of mine says, thank you for the encouragement that you give me. Or thank you for contacting me uh, to see if I'm okay. Because sometimes we smile, but we're really not okay. we just really not. Uh, my daughters uh, over here, raise your hand, daughters. They are my encourager. Okay, and I know that I'm there, so we support each other. We may not always agree, but it's all about building strong families. As Ms. Davis was saying, it's all about building strong families. So bruised but not broken, we want to take this to number one, best seller. Let's try to do it. To write the next book now. I've been writing my books for about 15 <laughs> years. I'm still on the first chapter. <laughs> I haven't started that yet. That's okay. But um, we have a publisher for you. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good thing. Right yeah, that's a good thing. But um, I just want to let everybody know that we all go through some type of stress some type of depression, some type of illness. We, we all have it, but we have to look to the higher power of God and have him to embrace us. You have to speak to him on a daily basis. Yes. On a daily basis. Because life is not promised to us the next day. Because you're good today doesn't mean you're going to be good tomorrow. Okay, so I want to thank each and every one of you guys for coming, being in traffic, uh, and traffic is, 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 is a mess today. Breast cancer awareness is, is this month as well, so we need to embrace those ladies that are going through breast cancer awareness. That's, that, the cancer is a lot, so let's try to embrace these other women. Does anyone have any questions for the writer? Or comments or statement? Okay, Debbie? Did you have anybody to talk to when you were going through all this? Did you have a, have a copy of it or anything? Not necessarily, um, because I try to hide it and um, just go on with life um, so that nobody would um, change our situation. Um, if you get the book and you read the book, it talks about um, the rejection from my dad, my mom remarrying, and all of the things that came along with that. So we went from, you know, a lower middle class family to a higher middle class family. And I didn't want to lose those things. And I felt like, you know, if I told somebody or if somebody found out, then my life would change again for the worse. And actually it changed for the better. You know, my mom, she would go, she would go um, to work with the bruises. And so people would see that. Um, my family knew, um, but, you know, we held them at bay because we didn't want them to uh, intervene. And so um, it just took the power of God to, to get us out of that. So. Anybody else have any comments or questions or just a statement in itself about domestic violence? 
feel free. Thank you for your <laughs> for your book. I think it's gonna help a lot of people. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The wonderful book. I read it from cover to cover. That's what we're trying to do. We're mm -hmm. trying to Very good. we're trying to embrace mm -hmm. those fears. We all have fears. And they're all different fears that we have. I have new friends, new cousins, <laughs> old friends. Helen, raise your hand. Helen reached out to me on Facebook. Uh -huh. She helped me during the time, I think it was what, 2005, Helen? 2006? <laughs> when we were just in the midst of trying to get the foundation up and going. And when she saw this event, she said, where do I get my ticket? I want to be involved. What do I need to do? Let me do something. And these are the kind of people that we need. Um, Leticia, raise your hand. Mm -hmm. Leticia is a friend of a friend. Her, her mother is one of my friends. And her mother told me that, hey, she does t-shirts. Leticia has gone through some things too. I, I don't, she probably don't want to embrace it or talk about it right now. Okay, can I? Okay, she gave me permission. I just love her as a daughter now. She's one of my other daughters. But Leticia was one of those corporate business women that was always on the go, just flying here and flying here, and just racing to the next airplane to catch in the next state to be in for the next assignment that she had. And she was having these headaches. And she thinking it's sinus, it's climate, atmosphere, whatever, whatever. So let me know if I, if I missed anything. Um, and she tells me this story, we both teary-eyed. And she said, Deborah, she said, I went on vacation and they had to rush me to the hospital. I'll make mm -hmm. this long story short as possible. They found out that she had bleeding on the brain. Yep, bleeding and pressure on the brain. Great bleeding and pressure on the brain. Mm -hmm. Golf ball size tumor. Tumor. Tumors on the front. Mm. So now she's having a different lifestyle. Okay? <clears throat> now she's having to learn new things, remember new things, can't remember, can't do the things that she used to do. But she's embracing her illness with these beautiful t-shirts mm -hmm. that she's now done for me, yes. for Women Empower Women. Mm -hmm. I think her father said, hey, you need to do something. You need, you need to get, you need to, you need to do something. You can't, you can't be stressed. So there is so much that we can do to help one another mm -hmm. and build one another <coughs> and encourage one another, okay? Because we all have, we're all one step away from judgment. We just all are. So we have to be ready. Um, but I want to embrace her, uh, of her illness. And now what she's doing is empowering me. I'm empowering her and encouraging her. And that's what we have to do yes. with one another. Um, Anybody else have any comments? Okay. Oh, I was going to say, I read the book cover to cover. I, I think it was just amazing how God just intervened in your life and just continued to be obedient to Him, write and encourage. And, uh, I just met, how long ago was it? A month ago? About a month ago. Month ago. Yeah. I just <laughs> met each other. Yeah. My cousin. Yeah. <laughs> My other cousin. And I just met. Yeah. <laughs> That's how we do it. You know, you have to be able to go to events like this because you never know who you're going to meet. And then these beautiful ladies, one have a book, and then the other one, she paints. Beautiful painter. So I want to encourage her, and we're going to do something together too, Dee. 
We're going to bring the best out in you with your painting. And she, I think she, um, talk about your, your things that you do with the children. Mm -hmm. Oh, because um, she encouraged children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to be starting a um, painting class for the kids. Um, pretty much just teaching them, you know, the love of art, creating art, and um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> oh, camera. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> so pretty much what I'm going to be doing is working with kids um, who just love to create art. Also, I was encouraged last night. Um, I got a text from someone who has a who has a daughter who is depressed and um, suicidal. So she she's been looking for a class like this um, to help with that. And I've been reading a lot about um, how painting or making art helps with. Stress, stress, yes. depression, um, and so I was just really encouraged. Something that I could start doing. With, well, let's get together yes. afterwards, and we can talk about it, and we can put an event together, and we can invite those ladies that are in that stress, that stress environment, and um, we can embrace them through painting. And um, I have a, a list here where I need everybody's information. Uh, so that we can keep up with each other, so that we can embrace each other and we can tell each other what our next event is. Um, I have also, they're eating right now. I have, I want, let me just let them stand. CW, uh, Leticia, stand for me. Marsha, stand for me. Coletta, stand for me. Would you please stand for me? This is what I do. I look at people's life. I see where they are. I see where they're going. I see where they, they're trying to, where they're trying to get to. And what I do is embrace them with words of encouragement. The first one I have here is Marcia. <coughs> With all the challenges that we go through and that we are going through, I want to say don't give up. Don't give up hope. Don't give up the challenges of your life because they're gonna, we're going to always face them, no matter what. And this certificate is to certify an award for you to overcome those challenges that you go through, no matter what they are, no matter what they are. And I want to present this award to you. I want to empower you. Come up, please. We just had Coletta come up too, as well. well. Let me just, both of them are daughters, so I want you on this side, baby. My daughter faces a lot of challenges every day with pain. But she gets up, she said, Mother, I see you, you struggling with all of this, I'm sick of you with these books in your hand, let me help you, okay? She's my inner strength. She pushes. 
no matter what pain she feels on a day-to-day -day basis. And I want to present this award, this certificate, as inner strength. I want to give you that inner strength because you have that inner strength. I want you to overcome those challenges. She's facing right now with her, with her daughters, my granddaughters, the challenges of depression and suicidal. So we are all going through it. Like um, Ms. Davis says, we don't, I mean, it's not just you going through it, we all go through it. We all go through it. Letitia, I want you to come up. I want to present this certificate to you as courage. You have courage to become whatever you want to right now in spite of the tumor that you have. And I know day to day you suffer from pain as well, okay? But I want to encourage you to be steadfast and keep the faith. Keep the faith because God is with you. God is with each and every one of you. Last but not least, my loving cousin, I want to present you a certificate of vision. You had that vision. And you 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 probably was struggling with it in the beginning. But you moved forward with that vision that God gave you. And now you're going to embrace and empower other women that are going through it. And maybe other millennials. We got millennials that are going through things right now. So we got to encourage these young girls. We got to empower them. So I want to say thank you for your for overcoming all of the challenges that you do. You talk about it, but you still push. You always push to that next level. Colada, you always push. You're here today because of your mother to represent. And I thank you guys for it. I thank every one of you guys for being here. And um, enjoy your lunch. We have t-shirts. Let me just, you stay up here. You guys go down. And y'all want to say something? Yeah, I just want to say, you know, thank you to you. She checks on me daily. Some days when I don't want to push, she makes me push. to have somebody that you can talk to and that'll help you push. So thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Marcia. Thank you, Mama. You're welcome. I love you all. We love you too. I love you too, bud. <laughs> Well, hello and good afternoon, everyone, everyone, everyone. Hello. 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 I'll pick that up. Don't That's worry okay. about it. Okay. Now, I do want to say this. You, can't, you cannot go back and change the beginning of your life. But what you can do this day is start changing the end of your life. Because God is the author and the finisher of your faith. And we will always have those challenges, but we serve a God 
that's bigger than any challenge. And I want to say to you, as you look in the mirror, everybody have a phone. I'm, I know this is a few words, but I'm, a, I'm not a few words type of person. Everybody take out your phones. Take out your phones. And everybody turn to the selfie side. Are we looking at the selfie side? We all have our phones out. Okay, you see yourself? Are you smiling? What do you see when you look at yourself in your phone, in your mirror? We're going to say it's a mirror. What do you see? What do you want to see? God's spirit. God's spirit. What else do you see? Somebody else. What do you see? God's child. God's child. What else? Survivor. A survivor. That's right. What else do you see? Because if you don't see it, you are going to repeat. Uh, uh, you're going to repeat something that you don't want to see. We need to see our promise. We need to see what God says we are. We need to know that we are the head and not the tail. We need to know that we are not stuck, that things may happen. But we don't have to put a crown on what happened. The only crown goes on top of our head because we are royalty. Say that. We, we, we are royalty. We are the royal priestess here. And we can do all things are possible with God. And you might be saying, okay, here this lady. What has she gone through? I want to introduce you. That's my second husband. Everybody say hi. Hi. That's second husband. Now, I had a first husband that held a knife to my throat in the front, in front of my children. I could have been stuck. I think when, I, when uh, uh, Sephora asked me to do this, I thought about the stuckness of a woman in the Bible named Tamar, Tamar. How she was stuck after she was raped by her brother and abused. And then somebody came and told her, well, honey, you be quiet. Don't say a word. Keep it to yourself. But we cannot be quiet and keep anything to ourselves. And Tamara was stuck and desolate in her house. So that's why I ask you to look at that, look at your mirror, look at the phone and see your face and say, I am not stuck. This is just a situation for this particular season. Because I know that God has empowered in me some greatness, has greatness on the inside of me. And there's a mantra that I say, is that I will, I can, I am, I'm ready, now watch me. Whoa. So the enemy thought that he was going to destroy you, baby. He thought you wasn't going to even get out of the bed. He thought he was going to keep you desolate. But no, no, that's not how it happens. Yes, we're here for this event, for, for domestic violence awareness. Yeah, we're aware of you, but we are going to speak out. We are going to be determined not to be quiet. We are going to embrace our sisters and let them know that you are precious. You are beautiful. You are intelligent. You can do all things. You are a child of God. You can move past this. And I'm not saying it's going to be okay. But see, you have to move past something. It says, in the, and, and some said, as we walk through the valley, of the shadow of death. It didn't say as we stay in the valley of the shadow of death. <clears throat> it said as we walk. It's a process. And so we get out of that process by surrounding ourselves in wonderful foundation that you have. And I like what my daughter said. She's bruised, but she's not broken. You may have had some situations, but you, I'm not counting you out. And don't you count yourself out. And I move so past an abusive situation that I can, my ex-husband got cancer. I prayed for him. And that was like 20 years, 20 something years ago. And guess what, he's still living. And we're all right now. Because I wasn't gonna let what somebody did to me 
affect me so bad that I couldn't move on. Mm. We have six sons. If I stayed stuck in a house desolate, where would our six sons be? I see greatness on the inside of each one of you ladies. And there's organizations that will help you. And I also think about some, the lady with the issue of blood. 12 years, 12 years. Some of us go through stuff and we're just still stuck 12 years trying to get some help. But you gotta press your way through, baby. You got to press your way through. You can't not stand still because as soon as you stand still, you might as well just get the shovel. I got a whole lot of black dresses and just, I will come to your funeral. But no, I want to come to your celebration. I want to come to your award celebrations and the victories that you have and the things that you accomplish. Please invite me. I am so grateful for my daughter inviting me to this and I said, now you know mama how mama is. <laughs> you know, I'm here to just, I want to love on you and encourage you. Because there's wonderful organizations. You don't have to do this by yourself. You are not alone. The enemy will tell you you are alone. But you are not alone. You're powerful. You're wonderful. And you're beautiful. Now I want you to take a picture. <laughs> of yourself. <laughs> Get that selfie out. <laughs> yes. Take a picture. Take a picture of yourself. Smiling. And I know you're eating right now, but I want all of you to do this mantra with me. I've been to South Africa and London and all over, and everyone <coughs> loves this mantra. Okay, ladies, stand up. Did you take your picture? Well, let's just stand up. I know you're eating just, mm -hmm. I know, I understand that, I understand that. But this is what I want you to say. Everybody, when someone comes, when the enemy tells you, you in your voice, that you're not going to be healed, that you're going to be depressed all your life, that you're going to live under a bridge, that you're not going to get up over this, you say, oh, yes, I can. Yes, I can. I can. I can. I will. I will. I am. I am. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Come on, let's get an attitude. Watch me. Watch me. <laughs> Love you, lady. And remember that you are greater than you think you are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm ready too. I'm ready too. Yes, I'm here today to encourage the young ladies, the old ladies, everyone regarding the seriousness of domestic balance and the awareness of that. My book that I have just written is Just Pray About It, The Power to Overcome. And it's available at Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and on my website www.drmarciaglamsquad.com I'm also on Twitter, Dr. Marcia, and, and also Instagram, M. Fetford. That's how you can reach me. Again, my website is drmarciaglamsquad.com Just pray about it. There's the power to overcome. Hi, my name is Sephonia Davis. I'm the author of Bruised But Not Broken, uh, Daddy's Damaged Daughter. And it's a book about uh, my life and how I've overcome tragedy, pain, domestic abuse, and among other things. And I'm just honored today to be able to be here and minister to other women about the effects of domestic abuse. And also, um, if you would like to purchase this book, you can go on barnesandnobles.com and it is there and if you would like to reach out my contact information is sdaviscoaching at gmail.com I guarantee you this book will bless your life